Thermal fatigue essentially is stress that's created by repeatedly heating and then rapidly cooling a metal. And that's just a phenomenon that occurs when heating and cooling any metal. So it's not strictly limited to HVAC systems. So for example, if you constantly heated and then rapidly cooled the stovetop pan, that pan would eventually begin to deteriorate and break down. And so that's what happens with furnaces and more specifically heat exchangers within the furnace. In fact, if you use a furnace often enough and for a long enough period of time, thermal fatigue is an eventual certainty. It's eventually going to happen. And here circled in red, you can see a rather large crack at the top of this heat exchanger that was caused by thermal fatigue. And so obviously you can kind of let your mind wander and say, well, what, what is likely to happen there? I've got those corrosive combustion gases. Now they have the potential to leak out and mix with my supply air. Now, we often see thermal fatigue present itself close to welded joints. And so over the past few years, what you've seen manufacturers moving towards is crimping of joints in a heat exchanger rather than welding them together because a welding joint tends to be a lot weaker than uh, crimping. Now, as bad as it is, just because we're heating and cooling it, thermal fatigue is made a lot worse by all of these conditions. So if we have any sharp angles inside of those tubes rather than the soft, round, serpentine shapes, we're really trying to avoid that because we don't want any sharp angles or sharp turns where hot gas could get trapped. Also, the fact that we are pumping corrosive combustion gases through the heat exchanger actually accelerates the thermal fatigue because it makes the, the metal weaker. It's corroding that metal. We also see that thermal fatigue can sometimes occur when we have a sudden and extreme temperature change. So, for example, in a boiler, if you have really cold feed water dumping into and around a very hot heat exchanger, then you may accelerate its failure and it might happen suddenly instead of developing over a long period of time. And we're going to discuss a specific, that specific scenario in a couple of slides. But lastly, one thing I want to mention is that because moisture is a byproduct of combustion, that moisture is also trapped inside of this heat exchanger and, and that moisture tends to also accelerate the corrosion of those heat exchanger tubes. So water and metal, even if it's stainless steel, they don't really play well together. So because of all of these issues, manufacturers have gotten smarter about the way that they construct these heat exchangers. And they've started to both apply coatings to the heat exchanger, and sometimes they use special alloys in the heat exchangers to prolong their life. And it does slow down the effects that I've been describing above, by a number of years, but really no matter what we do, um, it's still going to rear its ugly head at some point. If you own and use the system long enough, the heat exchanger will fail. By the way, I, I just want to mention that thermal fatigue isn't limited just to the primary heat exchanger. Cracks from thermal fatigue can also be found in secondary heat exchangers as well. So it doesn't have to be super hot gas to, to um, develop. 